Hey guys, Mark here. I hope you're doing well. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make a rank key guard. So first off, what is a rank key guard? In effect, it is a tool or a keychain used in order to hold all of your keys in the same location. With this, you can create a master set of keys which you can use to open up all of the important locations in your life. For example, you would have the keys to your home, the keys to your mailbox, the keys to your garage, the keys to your car, the keys to your basement and so on, all in the same location. This is very handy because it saves you a lot of time looking for keys, exchanging keys and so on. You can rely on one set to have all of the keys that you need. Some of you may remember that I have already made a master set of keys in the past by making a simple lanyard using the good luck knot. Now this project was so successful in our home that basically my wife took over this set. To get it back, I was forced to design something for her. So this is what I came up with. This ring keyguard has six loops which should be more than plenty for most people. It also looks quite nice in my opinion and in the following segments I'm going to show you the supplies and how to make it. Before we jump in into the supplies needed for this project, let me give you a quick rundown of the techniques used. We start off with some sort of a ring, key ring or some piece of hardware. We feed a number of strands through, fold them in half, then braid a length of a flat braid. In this case the French Senate. Then, with each of the strands, make one loop. In this case, I had six strands to work with, so I have six loops. Then, tie a multi-strand Turk's head knot over the loops, where the braid transitions into the loops in order to hide the transition. With this, your key guard is complete. Now, let's make our own. The first supply that you're going to need is going to be hardware for the top of the holder. Here you have a lot to choose from. Choose any supply that you have. For example, you can use a rope thimble, snap hook, carabiner, metal ring, key ring, more of a square ring, whatever you have. The local hardware store is sure to have something that you can use. The next supply is going to be three pieces of paracord, each about four feet long. The third supply is optional, a needle and some thread which is going to help you stitch together the loops in order to hold them in place. This is not absolutely required, but in my experience it makes the job a lot easier. Finally, something to cut your cords with and a lighter to melt the ends. With these supplies ready, let's begin tying. We are now going to begin tying. Take your three strands of paracord, feed them through your ring, pull them through to the middle point of your strands. So both sides should be of equal length. We're now going to slightly rearrange our strands. Take your first cord and make sure that the front part is first. Then the back part 
is at the second position. Take the second chord and do the exact same thing. So the front part is first, then the second part. And the third chord, again, front part is first, then the back part. Hold your chords in this order. Like this, and we can now begin our flat braid, the French Senate. Take your left strand, pass under your second chord, over the third, under the fourth, over the fifth, under the sixth, like this. Tighten up. And tighten up all of your other strands to get a nice looking top here. Now we're going to take our left strand again, pass under, over, under, over, and under the first strand that we used. Like this. Tighten up by pulling on your second strand. Like this, and we can now continue. Take your leftmost strand again. Pass under, over, under, over and under the second chord that we used, like this. Tighten up. And we can now continue. Again, the left chord, under, over, under, over, and under the previous chord that we used. Tighten up. And again, take the leftmost strand, under, over, under, over, and under. Tighten up. And continue. We're going to braid about 3 inches in length. After you have braided about 3 inches, it is time to make our loops. We are now going to form the loops at the bottom of our flat braid. To do this, we are going to fold each of the strands in order to get a loop. So 6 strands, 6 loops. The first one is going to be the right one. We're going to fold it up, like this. The second one is folded down. The third one up, like this. The fourth one down. Then the fifth one up. And the sixth one is folded down. So this is how you get your loops. As I've mentioned, I like to stitch in my loops in order to hold them together. To do this, 
I take a needle and some thread. I make an overhand knot on the other side. Like this. I take my first cord on the right. Fold that up. Go through it. So through the loop. Through both strands. Like this. And through the two strands for a second time to lock together this first loop. Now the stitching should be done as close to the flat braid as possible. Now take the second strand, fold it down, make sure it is of about the same size as the first loop, then stitch it together. So through once and twice. Then the third strand is folded up like this and we stitch it through once, twice. Then the fourth strand is folded down like this. Then I stitch it through once, twice, then the fifth strand is folded up. Again make sure that your loops are about the same in length. Stitch it again together. And finally, the last strand Fold it down, like this, stitch through it, so through both of your strands, Like this. Now, the strength of this stitching is not all that important. Later on, we're going to cover this transition with a covering knot. But still, we're going to finish up this stitching by locking it off for a second time. We have six loops, a flat braid, and our piece of hardware at the top. We're now going to cover the stitched section using a covering knot. To make things easier to see, I'm going to place my loops into a pipe. Then I'm going to use my strands to tie my knot. The pipe is just going to make things easier to see. I don't usually use it, 
but in order to make things easier for you, I'm using the pipe as a mandrel. I'm going to grab all six of my strands We grab them, like this, so they line up parallel. You don't want them to cross. So like this. The strands are parallel and neatly lined up. Now, we're going to wrap around around our loops like this. Make sure that your strands do not cross. Now we're going to use these six strands to travel through these six strands traveling around our loops. We start with the first strand traveling under, over, under, over, under and over. So each strand is going to do three unders and three overs. Take the second strand and start your sequence under the previous strand that you used. Travel under, over, under, over, under, over. So again, three unders and three overs. Take the next strand, travel under the second chord that we used, so the previous one, again under, over, under, over, under, and over. And the next strand, under the third strand that we used, so the previous one, then over, under, over, under, and over on the left. Take the next strand, so the fifth one, and travel under the previous strand, under, then over, under, over, under, and over. And the final strand travels under the previous strand, so the fifth one, again under, then over, under, over, under, and finally over. And with this we have tied our knot. I'm now going to tighten it up over my loops, covering the stitched section. So I just slowly pull on each of the strands just to tighten it up a bit. And our knot is beginning to form. 
So at this point we have slightly tightened up our knot in order to make it more compact. Before we tighten it up all the way, we're going to finish up our ends. This is done by taking one of the ends. Remember that we finished up our sequences going over one. So we went under over, under over, under and over. So over this strand. Now, what we're going to do is immediately after the strand where we go over, we're going to pass under the knot to the right side. So over this strand, then under the knot to the right side. Take the next strand again. Remember that we went over as the final part in our previous sequence. Then travel under the knot to the right side. So finish up with an over. Travel under the knot. And the next strand again finishes up over. Then under the knot to the right side. And the next strand again finishes its sequence over. Under the knot and to the right side. And the next one again finishes over. Travel under the knot and to the right side. And the final strand again finishes over. Then we travel under the knot and to the right side. Now at this point all we need to do is tighten up our knot. So this is our end result. What we're going to do is try to tighten it up flat like this. So the front and back are a bit flatter than the sides. This is ideal in my opinion, but well, as long as you tighten it up, it should look nice. Now we start tightening right where our strands come out of the stitching. Then simply pull on them through the entire knot and tighten up. And the next strand again here right at the stitching pull tighten up. And once you do this with all of the strands you are good to go. After tightening up your knot, take a pair of scissors or a knife and cut 
your strands as close to the knot as possible. Do this with all of the strands. At this point, what we need to do is make our knot a bit flatter. To do this, what I do is take a plank and roll my knot. So basically, I just press on it with my plank and move up and down, flattening up the knot. Now you're going to need to put some weight onto the plank in order to flatten up your knot. What we are aiming at is to have the front and back of the holder flat and the sides a bit less flat. So these front and back sides are wider. Once you have rolled your knot under the plank, a lot of the ends are going to move under our knot. There may be a few ends or fibers still sticking out. And at this point, you simply push them in under the knot. And with this, our holder is complete. All there's left to do is to attach some keys and enjoy the benefits of having all of them at the same spot. Guys, thank you very much for joining me in this tutorial. I hope that it wasn't too hard and I hope that you were able to get through it. Thank you very much and I hope to see you next time.